Okay, cool. So, yeah, the first thing that we wanted to talk about is that, um, yeah, following the feedback from the survey and um, also to make the the call similar to to that of Comet BFT and SDK, we have created this uh, IBC Community Google Group. Uh, I, I I read in the chat that some link is not working or something. Yeah, the uh, yeah. the link in the old HackMD notes. The link to the Google group uh, didn't work. Uh, so this link here. Can you guys try if that works? Doesn't work for me. No, hmm. I just get you are not a member of any groups yet. Um, okay. All right. I guess that's something we need to figure out. <laughs> then. Yeah. Um. We'll 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 follow up then on that. So we won't just like cancel immediately. Um, yeah. But yeah, probably we should just do it offline. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. But yeah, we're creating. We we have created this group. <clears throat> And um, yeah, and we have, and we're gonna transition on also to a Google Doc uh, for the notes of the of the meeting. Uh, so once you're able to uh, join the group, uh, you should be able to access that, um, and also the calendar for the invite. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so that's this is what the the document will look like, <clears throat> and yeah, we are starting today to use it. Um, <clears throat> Okay. To so use the thanks, Marco. Okay, we'll have a look at that. All right. Um, okay. So then, yeah, we're gonna start with the the updates from the interchain team as usual. Um, somebody can maybe mute. I hear somebody some background or was it uh, from you guys uh, in Berlin? <laughs> All right, anyway, um, Susanna, if you want to go ahead with the updates from products. Okay, yeah, just um, a couple of things. Um, so we have a new DevRel joining our team who you can all see on camera. So. I know, Sena, maybe you want to introduce yourself uh, rather than... Yeah, than I've been introducing myself every day for the past uh, <laughs> nine, 10 days, maybe. But uh, yeah, nice to meet you all. Some of you, uh, I've already introduced myself a couple of times, but uh, I'm Sardar. I'm the new DevRel in the IVC team. And Hello. before this, I was working in Secret Network. Uh, in, in smart contract development, Cosmosm, yeah. Um, so yeah. And didn't you like um, host the Secret Network Summit thing? Uh, I I don't think that was me. Yeah, though I might have done so, like um. There was a there was a what was that? Um, some kind of workshop, like online workshop, where I was involved in, and I was also presenting. But uh, I don't think, yeah, I, I didn't host the summit. But yeah, so um, said I, um, our new DevRel on the team. So hopefully you'll be getting to know him well um, in the coming. Uh, few months and whatnot. Um, and then beyond that, we're looking to hire someone for product marketing. So we've kind of been doing, um, preparing the interview process, doing some interviews and such. Um, and then just the last update is we're also working on refreshing the IBC protocol website because right now it's a bit haggard. So yeah, some work's going on there. These are probably the main things to update on. That's cool. Uh, thanks. Then, yeah, on protocol and engineering, uh, 
yeah, we worked on our OKRs for Q2. Uh, and yeah, these are some of the highlights, uh, the major things that we plan to achieve. Uh, yeah, we want to cut the final releases for 7.1 and 7.2. We want to tag um, channel upgradability alpha. Uh, we want to work on path unwinding. Yeah, work on the spec. And then either on the implementation or a review um, an implementation. Uh, maybe we'll talk more about this um, a bit later on, about the different approaches that we can go for uh, path unwinding. Uh, and yeah, we also want to start integrating with uh, Comet BFT 38, 038, and the next SDK release. So those would be like the major things for this quarter. Um, then uh, talking about um, the releases, so 7.1. Uh, yeah, on, on the ADR8, uh, yeah, so um, from previous calls, we mentioned that um, uh, we have this um, interface that the packet data of the applications can implement. Well, and, and we implement it for ICS20 and ICS27. Um, and the ADR8 middleware uh, can. <laughs> can we... <laughs> Uh, can we... I believe that's LAC or... <laughs> uh, Carlos, you can just mute the... Yes, I, I, just, I just mute him. Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> um, yeah, so we have um, uh, this interface um, and the middleware, uh, the ADR8 middleware uh, can, can use um, the interface uh, to get the the callback addresses and osmosis has been working on a on a wasm hooks uh, middleware um yeah and we want to uh, meet with them and confio to to have a review of the design of that middleware um and yeah if there's any feedback uh, then we will also adjust the, the adr8 and the interfaces yeah so that's plan for this couple, next couple of weeks. Um, and then regarding local host, I just wanted to yeah, ask uh, if there's any progress on the integration between Agoric and the Relayer, uh, if there has been any progress there. Maybe. Hi. Yeah. Yeah, is, is Justin here? Um, no, I don't see him. Yeah, as uh, I I will uh, ping him, but as far as I know, they they are still uh, working on the uh, relayer implementation. At the last meeting, they announced that they they weren't as close as they thought, and they had to go back and and uh, rework a few things. So okay. we're still waiting for uh, for that. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Then yeah, that's uh, for v seven point one. Um. Then for seven point two. What's yeah. the timing for v seven one or seven one? Yeah. Um, so it's a bit pending on on yeah on on ADR eight uh, to get this feedback. Um, uh, uh, yeah, from from the Wasm hooks uh, middleware. If there's anything we need to adjust there on ADR8, and there's another uh, PR, yeah, there's another there's another two features that uh, we would like to include. One of them is about adding a state entry with the the, the total amount escrow uh, in in the in transfer. So when 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 tokens um, are transferred uh, with ICS20. Uh, we're gonna set in a state uh, the total value of those tokens that are have been uh, yeah transferred transferred. Uh, yeah, this is this is also a request. This was a request for from Osmosis because they needed to have this. Uh, yeah, this would facilitate their uh, rate limiting middleware. 
So that's one that we're working on uh, as well, trying to, to include it. And another one is um, adding also JSON encoding uh, for the um, interchain accounts transactions for the messages that are sent from the controller to the host. At the moment, uh, yeah, the, the messages are protobuf encoded, uh, but we also got a request um, yeah, from Cosm Wasm and EVM chains to be able to do the encoding in JSON. Uh, so we are also trying to see if we can include that one in the release. Um, and yeah, we're also waiting on the feedback uh, of the integration between yeah Agoric and, and the Relayer for the localhost client to see if there's anything that we would still need to adjust there. So that's a bit like the pending work. Um, yeah, and the timeline yeah depends a bit on on how we progress with those things. Uh, yeah. Does that answer a bit your question, uh, Dean? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Then for 7.2, yeah, um, we're doing a bit of work on the Wasm Clients PR opened by Strangelove. Um, yeah, um, reviewing and yeah, uh, doing some there's more improvements there, uh, but yes, it's still work in progress. Uh, yeah, I'm working together with Strangelove to yeah to upstream it to IBC Go. Um, yeah, then for V8, yeah, we're focusing a lot on channel readability. Uh, the last couple of weeks, um, the, yeah, we have been discussing some design improvements and we, we agreed on, on them last week uh, after Colin made a, a proof of concept with those improvements. Uh, and we are trying to apply those improvements now to the init and try steps of the handshake. Um, yeah, as part of these improvements, there's something that is relevant for the relayers. So maybe Colin or Aditya, if you guys want to explain that in more detail, um, yeah, so part of the, the issues we, really, we ran into was the um, dealing with in-flight packets. Um, so one of the improvements that we made is that uh, the handshake would first block uh, incoming sends and then flush all packets left in the queue before continuing the handshake. Um, so this is just something for relayers to keep in mind um, when they start integrating as something that um, will come up in order to support this feature and it's different from the, the flow that they're generally used to. Um, are there any relayer people on this call to have that have any questions that don't know if there are? Maybe Luca. Uh, I'm here, but uh, I still need to look uh, at the new design too. Okay. Yeah. Questions. <laughs> no, no worries. I mean, I wrote. Uh, I haven't written the the improvements yet. It's kind of still just we've decided it, but uh, haven't. Hopefully, I'll have something by the end of the week uh, to show it to you. Okay. Uh, All right. Thank you, Aditya. Um, yeah. So that's what's going on on channel credibility. Um, then we're also trying to tag new releases. Um, yeah, last week we also tagged a new version of ICS 23. So that's V010. Um, this includes the support for um, non, non existence proofs uh, for Penumbra. Uh, yeah, the, um, the changes that they needed to support non existence proofs. So that's included there, uh, and yeah, we're gonna try to include it also in the in the V4, V5, V6 uh, releases, uh, minor releases that are bumping also SDK. Um, yeah, and then uh, for path and winding, yeah, Aditya wrote a comment in the discussion in the spec repo with the pros and cons of the different approaches. Um, so maybe Aditya, if you want to explain a bit more. 
Yeah, I can also tackle uh, Jacob's question in the chat on comparing unwinding to packet forward middleware. So it's the same. It's the same fundamental like uh, feature. Um, I just think the path unwinding is a better descriptor um, of what we're trying to do and achieve than the packet forwarding, um, because the point is to unwind the the DNOM path to back to its source and then send send to its final destination so that we we get the desired denomination um, that the user expects rather than this this additional hops that we have in IBC. Um, and so uh, as you I mentioned in the issue comment, the um, all the approaches that we've considered um, have the exact same logic basically, which is to um, put something in the packet data that tells it where the um, the packet should go, where the token should go once it reaches source. Um, and then on each hop, um, send for further along in, in our path. Um, and then it like basically send a new packet one, to the next hop in our path until we reach the end. And the end has a successful act or an error act and we propagate those acts all the way back, um, which will then give us either a success or a failure. Um, so to achieve that, it would require like some changes to the current packet forward middleware. Um, and a it would also require some channel upgradability. If we if we went that route, it would require channel upgradability so that um, chains along the path are aware of what the the next chain along the path is running, what code it's running. Um, so yeah, there are kind of two two possible approaches. One is to put it into middleware, um, and then one is to bake it directly into ICS twenty. Um, and there are pros and cons with, with both approaches. Um, and for the reasons that I listed in, in the approaches that I uh, detailed, I think the ICS 21 has the least amount of cons. Um, it can get us to kind of full, full fledged support um, quicker. Um, but yeah, I've kind of written the pros and cons and what I think is what our team thinks is the right approach given those pros and cons, but um, it is looking for it is part of the discussion on path and winding. So um, yeah, definitely please read through it and and comment if you have any questions or concerns. If you don't mind, I'll ask just one like really quick question. Is there a pathfinding aspect to this? Or are or like with PFM, when you want to say like, you know go say you're doing like uh, yeah. origin, intermediary, intermediary destination, right? Um, you program all of that into the first transaction and then it'll route along that path. Um, is there automated pathfinding with the unwinding or is do you specify the path when you make the transaction? Yeah. Um, so I think I wouldn't, I think the way that you labeled them is a little bit confusing to me. So I'll change the labeling. Um, I think it would be more like, uh, I think that the kind of example would be more like, okay, sender chain, intermediary, intermediary source destination um, would be kind of the path that we would, we would be supporting. Um, and in both cases, we can route back to the source automatically. So the, the user doesn't need to give us any information to get to the source because all of that information is encoded in the denomination itself. So that doesn't require any user input. But of course, once you get to the source, going from the source, like basically the, the issuer of the token out to your final intended destination, is input that the user has to give at the time of sending. Um, and one thing, if you, I believe I've written it up in the path and winding case, but um, one thing that we uh, want to make sure is that at least currently, the way that that would happen is you would have to put in the channel information, but you would have to put the channel information from the source chain. So if I'm going from, if I'm trying to send Juno, uh, sorry, if I'm trying to send Adam from Juno to Osmosis, and routing through the hub in this case, 
then I would need the hub channel to osmosis um, in my packet that I sent to Juno. Um, or I need to put that information in the memo or in a different field or something. Um, but that's kind of not ideal. So part of getting this feature to really like 100% status, in my view, is to have at least some local CNS um, so that as a Juno user, I can say, unwind this and send it to osmosis, and then it unwinds down to the hub, and then the hub can just say, I know what the osmosis panel is, I'm just going to plug it in for you. Um, and that's kind of what I would think is required for a full feature, and that needs to exist regardless of what approach we take, whether it's a middleware or, or base application. Cool. You, Thank you, you, very much. you mentioned that the DNOM encoded the source in the four hop case, it, but is it is it the DNOM encodes it or the DNOM encodes, you know, one step and it's just you can trace through those intermediaries what the source is. So the DNOM implies it, but it doesn't actually have it in the DNOM. Or is there something yeah, it, different? It, it the DNOM tells you the exact path to the token token. So then we would just uh, we would just take the the first prefix of the DNOM and use that as our channel ID. And then we would send it. And once we sent it, because it's sent backwards in token history, the, the DNOM that we would receive is like one uh, path, one hop order. And then we would take yeah. the next path. And then, it, and then by the time we get to the source, it'll be like completely unwound. Yeah. Sure. Right. 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 So, okay. I just wanted to make sure that that, <laughs> that matched my understanding. What you said, I, I, I couldn't interpret that way. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. My point is just that the user does not need to give us any information to get it to this. Cool. Any any more questions or about path and winding? Right. If not, then that's the updates from the interchange team. Any more questions about anything of this? Any of this? Yeah, right. and talk about the layer teams. Uh, Hermes, any updates you want to share with us, Luca? Uh, we've been we started working on the uh, channel upgradability, so mainly on the upgrading each step. Uh, I'm guessing we'll have some changes with the design improvements, but uh, yeah, we're trying to keep up. So it, we can release it as fast as possible. And other than that, we're also working on looking push versus pull relaying uh, for Hermes. Sorry, Luca, can you repeat that? Uh, yeah, we're we're working on uh, seeing the like exploring difference between push and pull relaying. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Um... Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, thank you. Yeah. Uh, and from the relay team, any updates that somebody would like to share? Jack or uh, Steve, maybe anybody from Strange Love? Uh, I don't know if Justin's here. I think we released uh, two dot. Let me just pull up. Is that? Um, oh, can you guys hear me? Yeah, it's two point okay. three, uh, maybe. Yeah, two point three. We we released two point three in the last week, um, which included a ton of changes and fixes. Um. Primarily things like extra codecs. This supports different Ethermint chains as people have different ways of encoding their uh, key material um, that causes uh, encoding issues. So we've added a way to support multiple different codec formats um, to help with Ethermint support. Um, added support for custom chain commitment prefix. Uh, this is in 
preparation for Penumbra IBC support. We've updated to Comet BFT and SDK 0.47, bumped to go 2.0. Uh, we also added the ability to broadcast multiple transactions per block from the same wallet, uh, which is a nice speed up. Um, I believe we also landed a uh, fee, um, fee grant feature in the relayer that allows you to uh, create multiple Go 2.0 or Go 1.20. Go 1.20, Jim. Thank you for the clarification there. Um, we also added a fee grant feature to the relayer that allows the relayer to manage like in different wallets and the grant and then only pay fees from a single, um, with a single thing, which is huge. We've removed Lens as a dependency and we're moving Lens to EOL. Um, the changes that Marco has made to the SDK no longer necessitate us maintaining a separate client library. Um, we've optimized some different queries around client expiry and channels, as well as adding a flush command. The bug fixes thing is too long to read, but we've fixed a ton of bugs, um, particularly around the stride and quasar launches for relaying on order channels. Um, great support there. Um, so yeah, go read the change log for full comments there. Um, did we also talk about the Wasm client? And, uh, briefly a bit, um, anything you would like to talk about? about? Yeah, uh, Steve, do you want to give an update on the testing that you've added to the Wasm client? Because I think that's quite impressive. Yeah, sure. Um, so we've developed a, a Tendermint light client Wasm Wasm contract uh, for the for the Wasm light client testing. Um, this is in addition to the Grandpa light client contract. Um, and this is in order to be able to duplicate uh, the same exact testing that the uh, IBC Go Tendermint light client currently has. Um, and so right now we do have 100% uh, parity with the uh, IBC Go Tendermint light client unit testing. That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. One thing I will note about that, because we're testing this in the Go side of things, this exact test harness is reusable for any Cosm Wasm light client contract that we add, which is like pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, cool. And yeah, and the the release, the two point three release, is really feature packed. So congratulations for that as well. Yeah. You know, Carlos, we're just over here doing it. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. Uh, cool. Um, so anything else to talk about today? We can move to the section about other updates or topics. Is there anything somebody would like to talk about? If not, um, I see that some people have, can access the notes document. Uh, is um, is the Google... I guess the one thing did, did we discuss the loopback client? Uh, a little bit, uh, yeah. So uh, Jim mentioned that um, uh, there are still some implementation that the implementation still needs to be finished in the in the relayer before they can do the the integration with Agoric. Yeah, that's that's correct. I'm just checking the channel and haven't had an update there for a while. I just uh, uh, pinged Justin. Is that a is that something you're expecting from our team, Jim? From Strange, oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, let let's let let's see let let's follow up in the Agoric Strange Love Slack and, and let's figure out how to get that work unblocked. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. All right, then 
yeah so yeah if you guys can yeah join the group when we fix the issues that we have that would be great and yeah we will continue using this notes document from now on any other thing for today otherwise yeah we can wrap up All right, if not, um, thanks a lot, everyone. And see thanks, you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you.